거슬러 거슬러 Adventurers, attention. We will be doing the Pledge of Allegiance. If I can get the congregation to please stand. Adventurers, present arms. We will now be doing the pledge to the Christian flag. Adventurers, present arms. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. Order arms. Adventurers, present arms. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Order arms. Adventures at ease and you may be seated and the congregation may be seated as well. Well, good morning, welcome, and happy Sabbath. I'd like to welcome each and every one of you here today to the Burleson Seventh-day Adventist Church. And uh, as our custom is, uh, this is when we turn around and we welcome and greet each other. So take a few moments to do that.
There's never quite enough time for that, is there? Oh wait, yes there is. It is not too late to come and just have a relaxed, good time, get to know um, some of your pew mates a little bit better in a super fun environment. Um, we're still having sign-ups. We have a great turnout already, but we'd love to see more of you. There are still a few tables that don't need to be decorated, and you don't need to bring entertainment, although we do have some decorated tables and some very fun entertainment, I'm just telling you. I can't wait to see your faces for some of this stuff. But um, you still have an opportunity. This is tomorrow night at 5, okay? Tomorrow night at 5, adults only. Child care is provided. If you have any questions, you need to sign up, you have anything you need, Larry and I will be at these back tables as you exit today. Thank you, Mary. I just have a few more announcements to share. In the foyer at the Connect Corner, you may pick up your contribution reports for tax records. Uh, Francisco Pollock is back there, and he, is, uh, he has a whole bunch of envelopes that have not been collected yet. So if you do need those, go back there and collect yours from him. Also today, we have a church-wide fellowship dinner. It will be in the fellowship hall after lunch. And please, uh, especially visitors, feel welcome. Come back, eat and fellowship with us. We do have uh, some membership readings this week. We have a first reading that you can look in your bulletin for. It is for... Uh, Robert and Patricia Saldana, and we will take care of the second reading next week. But we do also have a second reading this week, and so we will need to take an action on that. Uh, the second reading is for Rodney and Pamela Mills, and they're transferring from the San Antonio Scenic Hills Seventh-day Adventist Church. I'd like to entertain a, men a motion to accept them into membership here. I see a first. Do I get a second? Very good, thank you. Uh, any opposed? No. Uh, then that is carried. We'd like to welcome them, and I'm not sure, are they, are they here? Great. We would love, thank you. Also, just uh, so you guys know, they are um, um, some of our local folks, but they, uh, Rodney is our new, um, our new ministerial director of the conference, and so we're glad to have them here in Burleson. He's my boss, so be nice to this guy, all right? It's a shame I messed that up, man. <laughs> well, we would like to welcome you all here, and if any, everyone can say welcome. welcome. Very good. Uh, and then on a rather uh, sad note, uh, Michael Smith is in the hospital at this time. He is uh, in the hospital at JPS, and so if you would please remember him in prayer, uh, let us uh, intercede on his behalf and, and pray to God uh, to be with him right now as he is ill. Okay, at this time, I'll ask Doug to come forward. Adventures, attention. Adventures, a prayer attention. Can you bow your heads, please? Dear Lord in heaven, I want to thank you for this wonderful Sabbath day that we have here. Lord, I want to thank you for the privilege of being able to watch these young adventurers perform the Sabbath today. Lord, I pray that you send your Holy Spirit to be with us and to help us to have a good blessing for their program. In precious name, we love you. Amen. Adventures, as you were. This morning, I'd like to welcome you guys all to the Burleson Church. Uh, it's an ex especially exciting Sabbath because um, the service is being done almost entirely by two to ten-year-olds. Can I get an amen to that? Okay. Some of you may be a little unfamiliar with this club. I was not lucky to be able to participate in this club when I was a, a child because it didn't start until 1992. So that's why some of you have never experienced the awesome joys of Adventure Club. 
But as the years have progressed, it's continued to evolve from just first and fourth, first through fourth graders to include kindergartners, etc. Um, the club was originally created to support parents and caregivers in encouraging their children in a growing, joyful love relationship with Jesus. So that's the whole reason why the club is here, so that we can encourage our children to commit their lives to Christ, as well as to acquire the habits and skills and knowledge that they need to live for Jesus. Honestly, I would have loved to be in this club when I was their age, and now I just get to experience it through their eyes. So that's the uh, next best thing. Um, God is interwoven in all that we do. It's not just about earning badges, about basket weaving, and yes, there is a basket weaving badge, or um, sewing or swimming, things like that. We, we talk about Jesus every time we meet. We start with a devotional time um, before we split off into our classes. And um, to give you an example, and I haven't done this award yet, so it's kind of new to me. There's an award called Tin Can Fun, which just in itself, that's an awesome name, right? And to earn this badge, you know, you have to learn about tin, and you talk about uses for tin, uh, but then you start talking about how things were preserved in Jesus's time, and um, how tin was used in Bible times, and then at the end, it culminates with service, because are we te we're teaching these kids to be servants, right? And so they actually have to bring three cans with them to donate to Harvest House or something like that. So that's an award badge, and that's kind of how we add Jesus into everything we do. The Burleson Church's Adventurer Program is really only as great as the congregation that supports it. And this doesn't just mean financially, though I'm not saying we won't take your money, okay? If you want, you can always give us some. But your prayers and your support, um, like all of you who chose to come today, even though you knew that maybe it was a children's service, you chose to come here and support these kids that belong to your church. And so we as a club want to thank you for your continued support, and we hope that you are able to gain a blessing from this service. Thank you. We are now going to do an opening song, and I would like those children that were involved in that to please come forward. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbidness, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Gentleness, self-control. Against such things is no law. Galatians 5, verse 22. And 23. 
At this time, it is, it is time to think about the act of giving, which is also an integral part of our service. Today's uh, special emphasis uh, offering for the, uh, uh, the conference-wide offering is for religious liberty. Scripture points to the day that when we will not have, there will be a day when we will not have religious liberty. And today's offering will go towards uh, funding the Religious Liberty magazine that will be presented to thought leaders in our community, including elected officials, judges, attorneys, and pastors of other denominations, as many others. Many thought leaders have forgotten the lessons of history. Prophecy tells us that these lessons will be forgotten, which will result in church and state uniting again. Not only will sending Liberty Magazine to thought leaders inform them of important religious liberty principles, but the Holy Spirit can use liberty to convict of truth. The religious offering also funds litigating cases of church members who lose their jobs because they are not willing to work on Sabbath. The local emphasis offering is for our youth. This is to help with the funding of our youth programs, such as adventurers. And uh, so think about this as we give today. Let us close our eyes and uh, ask the Lord's blessing. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us this opportunity to be able to return to you that which you have blessed us with. We ask that you will place a, a special blessing on today's offering and that it will be multiplied and used in whatever fashion you deem. We thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, we will have the children's story. And uh, so we'll collect the offering and the children may come forward. Children, where's this voice coming from? You don't even know. Um, if you can tell, there's something black behind you. So you're going to need to turn around because I think you'll want to see what's occurring on top of the big black thing. But no peeking over. The big inning, g g God's uh, oh, sorry, me. In the big inning, g God's ed, be, le, uh, okay. These are probably an important person. Be lit. Hmm. Hi, Victor. What are you doing? Well, I'm trying to read, and I'm starting out my words just like my teacher told me to do. Let's hear it. Okay, I just read in the big inning, God said, Lisa B. Litters. What? That doesn't make any sense. I know. Whoever wrote this didn't have very good grammar. Now I know that Litters is in Pennsylvania, but who is Lisa and what baseball game are they talking about? Victor! 
Victor, what on earth are you reading? The Bible, chapter 1 of Genesis. Only I thought that baseball came after God created the world, and then... Let me see. Oh, silly Victor, it says, in the beginning, God said, let there be light. What? But I started up my words just like my teacher taught me to, and... It's okay, Victor. It takes a lot of practice to learn how to read. Sometimes letters sound different than you think they should. Hi, Victor and Sarah. I heard you talking about reading. How's it going? Oh, not good at all, Mama. I'll never learn to read. Now, Victor, Sarah is right. It takes a lot of hard work and practice to learn how to read. Sarah didn't have to practice as much as I do when she started to read. Maybe if I just look at the words a little harder, I'll be able to read them. I can do it by myself. That's good that you're willing to try, Victor. But you know, sometimes we need other people to help us. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. What does lean not on your own understandings mean? That means to talk to other people and not just try to learn things on your own. Oh, like when Victor tried to read the Bible all by himself and thought it was talking about baseball and a city in Pennsylvania? That's right, Sarah. And what does acknowledge mean, Mama? In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. To acknowledge someone means to know that person is there with you. When we let God in charge of our lives, he will show us the way to go. When we try to do things by ourselves without God, we can go the wrong way. Victor, did you know there is a story in the Bible about someone who had a hard time reading just like you? Will you, Mama? Yes. In Acts 8, there was an Ethiopian man reading from Isaiah. This man was riding in a chariot. Do you know what a chariot is? A chariot was like a cart pulled by a horse that people rode in before there were cars. So the man was riding in his chariot, reading from Isaiah. God, God told the disciple Philip to go up to the chariot and ask the man if he knew what he was reading. The man said he didn't, and he asked Philip to ride with him and explain to him what he was reading. So did Philip tell him? Yes, Victor, he did. And because Philip explained the book of Isaiah to him, the man was baptized. The man who was in charge of Ethiopia's money got baptized because of Philip? If Philip hadn't helped him, the man would have never known about Jesus. We don't know that for sure, but we do know that Jesus uses other people to help us. The Ethiopian man used Philip to help him understand the Bible. And we should use other people to help us understand the Bible or anything else that we don't know about. Mama, can you tell me that Proverbs verse again? Sure, Sarah. Tell you what. Why don't you and the kids repeat after me? Adults, you can help too. So repeat after me. Trust in the Lord. Trust, Trust in, in the Lord. With all your heart. With, with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. And lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. And he will make your path straight. And he will make your path straight. Thanks, Mama. I'm so glad you're here to help us learn things. Yeah, thanks. At least I know that I'm not the only one who has a hard time reading. Sarah, will you help me read Genesis 2? Sure, Victor. Come on. Goodbye, kids. Okay. <sighs> Thank mm -hmm. you.
curious. Okay, Curious Cubs, stay up front for me. We're going to do our action song for a special music. We have two songs for special music for you all. They've been practicing. This first one, just a second, in a little bit. Uh, this one, they've been practicing, and it has some hand motions with them, okay? Yes, in a moment. Stand back. Let's do the picture. Okay. Get ready. Just wait. A lot of courage for them to sing. Good job, Curious Cubs.
At this time, we will seek the Lord in prayer. And any and all who would like to come forward to the front for the Garden of Prayer, please feel free. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, I imagine right now that you have a smile on your face. As these, your little children, have come forward to praise you with joy in their hearts. We thank you for giving us this opportunity to come and to worship you and to praise you. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to bring your children to you and to place them on your laps. And I know that you welcome them as you did when, when Jesus was here on earth. Father, we thank you for <clears throat> all the many wonderful blessings that you've given us. We thank you for taking care of us, for providing for us, for being with us this week for providing protection, providing for all of our needs. We thank you for being there to listen to us as we have prayed to you and talked with you and, and laid our burdens at, our, at your feet. At this time, I want to ask you to be with Mike Smith as he's in the hospital, that your holy angels will be there beside him to strengthen him and that he will feel your presence. I ask that you will be with those who are attending to him, that you will grant them skill and wisdom to be able to treat him effectively. I ask that you will be with Lori as well, that you will continue to walk with her each and every day, that you will continue to strengthen her, and that she will continue to be a blessing to those that she meets as she goes through her treatment. I ask that you will be with those that I don't even know about, those in our congregation sitting right here today, family members of those who are sitting here today, those who are on our hearts that we haven't brought forward, that you will attend to them, that you will bless them, that you will strengthen them. <clears throat> Father, I ask that you will be with us this coming week, that you will help us to be a blessing to others, that we will be your hands and your feet that we will show others your love, that they will not see us, but that they will see you. We ask that the Holy Spirit will dwell in us and produce in us your character, your love, your mercy that we can give to others. We thank you for being a God that wants a relationship with us, that wants to be with us. And we offer you all honor and glory and praise. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Honestly, I've been so blessed already, I could probably just go home. But we're not going to do that. Um, I have an uncle uh, who lives in Washington State, and uh, how many of you guys like pears? If you've eaten pears, you might have had my uncle's pears, because he has hundreds of acres of pear orchard, uh, or a couple hundred, however many, um, in Washington. And I recently spoke to him about how to grow a pear tree because I didn't know how to grow a pear tree. And did you know you can't just take the seeds of a pear and stick it in the ground and hope a tree comes up? I, d I didn't actually know that. Um, there's a lot of steps to growing a pear tree. And people in nurseries, they make these little seedlings. And the little seedlings, they take a bud, a little flower bud, an open flower bud from an apple or a pear tree, 
and they make a little slit into the type of wood that they want that pear apple to become. So if you want a Bartlett pear, you're going to take a little Bartlett pear piece of wood, and you're going to put the little bud inside. And if you want a D'Anjou pear, you'll do the same thing. The bud grafts or grows with the piece of wood to become the little sapling that you then plant in the ground. And as I heard my uncle talk about this process, it kind of reminded me of a Christian's walk with Jesus. Jesus is the piece of wood that we want to be. And we're the bud that must grow into the wood to become strong and to eventually bear the right kind of fruit. Jesus said in John 15, 5, I am the vine and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. If you guys have your Bibles or your phones, please turn to Psalm 1, 1 to 3. Let's do it old school. Say amen when you've got, got, gotten to it. See, I'm noticing the people with the paper Bibles are saying amen quicker than the people with the phones. <laughs> okay, Psalm 1, 1 to 3 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You know, a couple of things to point out in that verse. The tree is planted on purpose. It is not like a wild seed went blowing out to the country and decided to put itself in the ground. It was planted. Also, it says the fruit of his season. The fruit's produced in God's time, not in our own. And they're planted by the rivers of water. You know, adventurers, adventurers, you're God's little trees. I think you're God's little trees. You were planted. You were planned. You were not born by accident. And God knows when you'll be ready to produce your fruit. What feeds God's little adventurer trees is the word of God. And just like the pear trees that my uncle grows, these saplings don't produce fruit right away. They don't produce fruit for several years. But just because there's no fruit on the tree does not mean that those trees are not growing and maturing and getting ready to bear fruit. Our adventurers have prepared some illustrations and texts that kind of help show what the fruit of the Spirit means to them. Let's see what they have to share. Hello. So we got our parents and our curious cubs, hold your signs up, Guy and and show your family a picture or a video of them implementing a word. So this is Alyssa. Alyssa is three, and she is showing love by giving hugs and kisses. That's a perfect example, Alyssa. Let's see who we have next. Oh, this is Cameron. Cameron, who is that in your picture? Zena and Cameron is showing love by loving on our pets and our animals at home. And he says he loves Zena to the moon and back. I think that's a very excellent way to show love, Cameron. Good job. Oh, Allie, can you hold your sign? Allie, who's that in the picture with you? Can you look back here? Who's that in the picture with you? Caden, is that your brother? Yeah, Allie is showing love by loving on her brother. And you guys look like you're having a really good time. That's a good example. 
And lastly, casein. <laughs> That's our really precious examples of love. Let's get our next group to show joy. Thank you, guys. Come on down. Follow me and sit down. Okay, let's get my joy. Andrew, Noah. Okay. Go stand up there, okay? Ready, Andrew? Okay, stand real close together and show your signs. Good. Turn it around. Turn it around. This first one is of Daryl. He's not here with us today, but his mom said Daryl shows joy when he was cooped up and it was raining, and he finally got freedom, and he's driving around on his little John Deere tractor. I think that's an excellent example of joy. <gasps> this is Andrew. You know, sometimes it's not about giving joy, uh, or getting joy. It's sharing joy. So Andrew's brother had a party at school and shared all the fun trinkets he got with his brother, Andrew. And he was very joyful with that. That's a good example. This is Violet. Violet's little picture says, no matter how you look like or what's on your face, true joy comes from inside. Thanks, Violet. This is Gunner. He's not here today. But his example of joy was when he traveled all the way to Sweden and spent time with his family there. And you can just see the light all over his face. And lastly, Noah's example of joy. Thank you, guys. And I think it's great when you ask the little ones their innocent um, examples of the words. Okay. My peace I give to you. Do not let your heart be afraid. John fourteen twenty seven. Yeah. 
Do I grab this? Do I get it? Two others as you would have them do to you. Luke six thirty one. Luke six thirty one. Do to you Luke 6, 31. Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. First John three eighteen. means goodness means to me I am opening a door for a lady goodness means playing with my daddy goodness means to me walking my dog goodness means to me whenever I was at the park I brought my water bottle and my granny was watching me I was going down the slide it was fun and the second minute I was called, my granny had called me. I hurried to my granny. She said, can you please fill my water bottle? And I said, yes, I'd love to. So I went to go fill her water bottle. And that was the end. I am helping the teacher to put the stuff on the desk. Goodness means to hug your mother. <laughs> Goodness means to walk the neighbor's dogs. Faithful to God because he followed God's instructions and built an ark. <laughs> Joseph was faithful to God in times of injustice, betrayal, and temptation. Some time later, Paul said to Barnabas, Let us go back and visit the brothers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Barnabas wanted to take John, also called Mark, with them. But Paul did not think it was wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in their work. They had such a sharp disagreement that they had parted company. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas and left, commended by the brothers to the grace of the Lord. Acts fifteen thirty six through forty. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor each other above yourselves. Romans twelve ten. The dictionary says that gentleness means to be kind and careful. I think, in, I think this means in both our words and our actions, Jesus was gentle. Matthew eleven twenty nine says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, 
For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. If we spend more time with Jesus and our fruits of the Spirit grow, then we can become more like Jesus and less like Paul and Barnabas. James 1, 19 to 20 says, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. What is self-control? When asked, the builders and helping hands stated that it was having the ability to control one's words, emotions, thoughts, or actions. We'd like to present a few examples, and maybe you can help us decide what is and isn't self-control. Noah recently got home from school. He had a long day, and he was pretty tired. He had plopped down in a chair. I don't have any homework to do, and I think mom can just clean my room for me tomorrow. I think I'm just going to play video games and read my Pokemon book until I'm told to stop. Fourth grade can be so draining. I just need to unwind, and I just don't want to do anything. So he picks up his video game controller and settles in for hours of gaming fun. Zarya has also recently come home from school. Her mom hasn't been feeling well all week. She really wanted to work on that American doll craft, but Oh, there's sink, there's dishes in the sink from last night. I guess I will do them. Maybe if I get them done quickly, I can still work on my craft. Zarya works on her dishes. She cleans the plates and the cups and she, wow, it's just hard work, I'm so tired. But she gets all the dishes done and she just sits down to relax for a minute. But then, but then Zaria, she thinks about it for a minute, and she sees her Bible laying on the desk. And she says, you know what? Maybe I should do my devotion early so that I can help mom make dinner, because she's had a really rough week. Was this self-control over by Noah? No. No. Was this self-control? Yes. yes. Sarah and her pretend mom, Maureen, come home Sunday from adventurers. <laughs> she asks her mom if she can go hang out with her friend Zaria later at the art barn. Her mom says, nope. You haven't cleaned your room? You have homework due tomorrow? Sarah explodes at her mother. She waves her hand. She yells. She cries. She stomps to her room, and she slams the door shut. Was this self-control?
Noah and his real mom are riding home from school one day. He asks, can I go to a friend's birthday party later this week? She says no, because they already have plans and she can't drive him that day anyways. He's a little upset that he can't go. But after thinking about it a moment and seeing how tired his mom is and how she probably doesn't want to argue about it, he asks her, mom, mom, is it okay if we go to Target on the way home and get my friend a present so I can give it to him at school? His mom nods and smiles. <laughs> Was this self-control? Zaria and Sarah are at a party and there's cookies. Oh, it's an exciting party. They both love cookies. I'm so hungry. I haven't eaten in at least two hours. And there's so many cookies. I could probably eat half the container. But oh, what if there's not enough for everyone? So, Sarah only takes one. Ooh, cookies! Cookies, cookies, cookies! I love cookies! I wonder if anyone will notice if I take them all. <laughs> Zaria glances around. She kind of wants to make sure no one's looking, especially her mother, who's at the party. And she just grabs the container of cookies, she stuffs one in her mouth, and she runs and hides in the closet to finish eating them. Okay. Was this self-control? Was this self-control? All right, give me those cookies, sorry. No, okay. <laughs> yes. I think all the adventurers wanted to eat the cookies before, but you can't go up front with Oreo mouths. That would be horrible. We looked, uh, we've looked at what the fruit of the Spirit means to the kids, and obviously that changes as they continue to grow and learn. Kids, why, why do we grow fruit? Do we grow it just so it looks pretty on the tree? We should remember that fruit is grown so it can be what? Eaten, right? Do we grow fruit just for ourselves? No. no. It's not just to help our own hunger, but to help the hunger of others. People who are in this world who are starving for a little love, a little joy, some patience, some peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness and maybe a little self-control. By our fruit, you shall know us. When we smile at someone at the grocery store, when we say a kind word instead of using a hateful one, by these actions, we show what the love of God and the Holy Spirit can do with our lives. We can be the fruit that feeds a world of starving people who are starving for Jesus, for his love, and for his perfect grace. In a few minutes, the adventurers will be reciting their club pledge in law. The pledge is a pretty simple statement. It's because Jesus loves me, I will always do my best. When we graft ourselves, when we take our adventures and we graft ourselves onto Jesus, and only Jesus and not the world, we will want to do our best. The law over here, which they're supposed to be switched, sorry. The law says that Je with Jesus' help, we can be obedient and pure and true and kind and respectful. But can we follow the rule all by ourselves? I'm sorry, what? 
No. The Holy Spirit is here to help us grow in Jesus. But do you know what, adventurers? The Holy Spirit does not get behind you and shove you the whole way there. The Holy Spirit's not back there kicking you into gear. You can't force a fruit tree to bear fruit. I can't just stamp my feet, wiggle my nose, and expect fruit to appear on the tree. Fruit is only grown when the bud is grafted onto a strong piece of wood, when the tree is cared for, when the dead wood is pruned off, when it's watered, and the same goes for the adventurers. As we fellowship together, as we read our Bibles, as we grow in Jesus, the fruit in us begins to grow. The world around us will see our fruit, and they will want the fruit. And that is how we as adventurers will follow our great commission to go into the world and tell people about Jesus. Adventures continue to grow in Jesus. Be the fruit that shows the world that Jesus is always the answer. And I will ask my curious cubs to come up. Adventures, attention. Present arms. Because Jesus loves me. I will always do my best. I think you guys have already done that. Okay. Adventurers, present arms. This Jesus can help, help me, me to be, be obedient, be pure, be true, be kind, be respectful, be attentive, be helpful, be cheerful, be thoughtful, be reverent. Order arms. And can I get all the adventurers to come up? After our closing song, there will be a benediction. Um, and then I need some, some congregational help. As they're walking out, we are all going to turn to our hymnals, and I believe in the bulletin says number 214, I think, and we're gonna sing our adventures out the door. Also, the altar team after the service is over will be over here. It'll be uh, my husband, Steve, and maybe someone else. Um, and we thank you very much for uh, worshiping with us today and feel free to enjoy a very good potluck. There's more food in the kitchen than I've ever seen in a long time. We are adventurers at home, at school, at play. We are adventurers. We're learning every day to be honest, kind, and true, to be like Jesus through and through. We are adventurers. Adventurers, prayer attention. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this wonderful day. Thank you for each and every one of these adventurers and their families. Bless them, help them to continue to grow in you and to share your word with others. Thank you for the blessing of Sabbath and for the blessing of having this club in our church so that the kids can get together and learn about you and have a fun time doing it. 
In your name we pray. Amen. Congregation, if you'll turn to, turn to hymn number 214, and let's see if you can sing, We Have This Hope, as grandly and largely as the kids just sang the adventurer's song. Thank you. 